Hello everyone and welcome to a new game on the channel and it's called Night Call. So as you probably see in the background, I don't know how this is happening all the time, but it is again a game that's set in France and even in Paris. So um, yeah, we remember we the revolution, but I think this game is more set to be in the modern times where we are a taxi driver who was attacked by a mysterious serial killer that's on the loose and now we have the job to find the murderer by talking to our client so uh this will more be like a story game again let's just dive right into it i have no idea what the pasadex is but i guess this will be explained in throughout the game so let's just go ahead and do a new game yeah let's go with Number one, or whatever. Oh, huh. yeah. I gotta say, the style of the whole game, as far as I've seen in the trailer, looks really nice. It's kind of a noir style. Choose the investigation. The judge, the angel of death, the sandman, surprise investigation. Huh. The game will randomly pick an investigation, no matter if solved or unsolved. Victims have all something in common and the motives seem clear, but which suspect could have done it? Balanced case, perfect for a first run. Okay, well I guess we will start with the first, with the easiest to get into it. Money will be easy to get by, the investigation will be easier, every action will take less time for a chiller experience. The way Nightcall was designed, or money will be tighter, the investigation will be harder to solve, every action will cost more time for a more challenging experience. Uh, you know what, we're just gonna go with balance, the way Nightcall was designed. I like the design so far, it looks really cool. Hear? Sir, can hear me? Or do I need to speak up? I'm not sure I understand. I just want you to be comfortable. You can always change your mind. The voice is female, husky and worn. You find it deeply comforting. Do you want me to speak in a normal, medium or loud voice? Well, I don't really hear anything like that, but, um, I don't know, I guess it's fine like that. <laughs> she takes a deep breath. Sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. The word bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. Coma. The word scratches along your throat. Yes, you were the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head. Victim. You are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris. You feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. The judge, as the police called the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver and, in most circumstances, it would have been fatal. We chose to put you in an induced... Her voice becomes more distant. Fate. You taste a bile at the back of your mouth. Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in one ear. Your fingers move to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It is incredibly painful. 
the day I'm sorry did they catch the judge no what about the cops did we have a passenger? I thought we just got out to take a smoke. What about the cops? The doctor is silent for a second. A very awkward second. She hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. Noise in the hallway attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care. He's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong, authoritarian voice. You can't clearly make up what she's saying. A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain, not fatigue. Some odd combination of the two. Before being in this hospital room, you'd never realized that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger. A feeling you know all too well. Days go by and a month later... Well, look, I've got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. You have a pounding headache. It's your first night behind the wheel since... since the attack. Are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rearview mirror. Yeah. He stares at you for a second or two without speaking. Sometimes I wonder what goes on inside your head. You always seem so far away. Um, I'm listening. Okay, okay. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know I'm worried about you, don't you? I know. You're like a son to me, you know. I know. And you know he's about to tell you the story of his taxi fleet, again. When my father died and left me the store, I could have sold it. I could have retired, gone back to the old country. Let him go on. But I decided to start a cab fleet with the money he left me to hire the guys from the neighborhood. And that's why I've got 45 guys like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air though none of them are any match for you. He smiles, his voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want me to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. You haven't been in taxi for weeks, maybe you do need a little refresher. I certainly do. Yeah, good idea. Right then, well first the map. You spot potential customers and try to guess where they'll be going. Then you decide. When a customer orders a taxi, if there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. He shrugs. That's the way it goes, it's business. No problem. The other fares, you look at the map and decide whether or not you want to take them. And then you drive. Flash has a quick mechanical smile. You know it well. When he talks about work, he talks about work. That's all. When your shift is over, we do the numbers and... His voice trails off as if searching for the right words. And that's all. It's pretty simple. There's no reason why you can't do it. Alright, no overtime. We're in France here and there are rules, regulations. You might not see it that way, but no one likes having a driver who hasn't slept for 24 hours. I certainly understand that. He looks away. Something's been bothering him since he got into the cab. Anyhow, you know the ropes. You get it. I know you're going to do a good job. What's the matter? Your boss keeps quiet for a while, as if he's hesitant to speak. And then... I don't think it's a good idea. You shouldn't be driving. 
The murderer is still out there and we think he's going to come back for you. Who's we? Your colleagues. I do too. Anyway, I'll let you get back to work. Every minute spent in your taxi is a minute lost. He gives you a smile, half ironic, half serious. Have a good evening. Sarcasm in his voice is palpable. Right, you have a good evening too. He'll spend the rest of the night dealing with problems and drivers. You wonder how and when the guy ever gets any sleep. Oh, well that wasn't then it wasn't too nice if I told him to have a nice evening, huh? Your boss opens the door and exits the cab. You watch him cross the street and enter the fleet garage. A couple of colleagues are milling about. Taxis are coming and going. They all ignore you, consciously or unconsciously. You're branded. You sit there a moment and turn the key in the ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. It's impossible to describe how you miss that feeling. It's back to the night shift, back to life. Despite the attack, despite it all. Okay, so that is... So now we can decide on who to drive, is that correct? Why is there... Can we drive a cat? That would be strange. So, is there anything that we would need that we could... Is there anything that we could see in advance about those people? Oh no, we're going down straight away. Well, whatever. Let's go there. A horde of cop cars is headed down a street. No one notices you. You sigh. Feel bourgeois, Charles de Gaulle make it snappy. Okay. Oh, okay, so we have to go there first and then we have to, we can decide if we want to accept or refuse it. I mean, we're already there, so let's take you. The passenger who settles into the back seat could be a male model. He asks you to take him to Charles de Gaulle airport. His voice is mild and pleasant. You sense your passenger wants to talk about the killer. It's simple. Since the first murder, everyone thinks they know something. Ooh, well, that's interesting. Everyone thinks they saw something. And this passenger is no exception. You watch him in the rearview mirror. As he adjusts his clothes, checks his breath, obviously primping. You drive people to the airport all the time. They bring along a suitcase or a bouquet of flowers. Your passenger doesn't have either. He's looking at himself in a rearview mirror. His lips part and he runs his tongue over his teeth. Nothing stuck in my teeth, right? You shake your head no. You wonder why he's going to the airport. You're wondering why I'm going to the airport, aren't you? Yeah. I could tell you were curious. I'll tell you. But it's a secret. His voice has changed as if he were about to deliver a speech. Women today are too smart for us men. Too smart? They were onto us the minute we tried to hit on them. Okay, I'm really interested in, wh in where this, in which direction this is going to go. He crinkles his nose if there were a bad smell in the cab. There are dozens of books on how to get lucky and how to score, but they all make the same big mistake. Do you know what the mistake I'm talking about is? Um... <laughs> okay, they're stupid? I don't know, maybe. This could just be the right answer, they're written by men. I don't know. Huh. Let's go with a jokey answer. They're stupid? You probably haven't read the right ones. Your comment clearly isn't going to stop him. He carries on, business as usual. Let me clarify. All those books about hitting on women never tell you where the best hunting grounds are. Oh, hmm, okay. A theatrical pause. Airports. Okay. 
another theatrical pause. It's brilliant, right? Women in airports are lonely, emotional, and available. How? On the street, they're always in a hurry, don't have any time at the movies or in museums, they don't want to be disturbed. But at the airport. He's clearly very proud of himself. He remains silent, he crinkles his nose and sniffs again. Is it me or is there a funny smell in your cab? You sniff too. Sorry, it don't smell anything. He shrugs, then goes back to his monologue. Personally, I prefer older women. Let's just talk. Let him talk. Single moms who are at the airport to pick up or send their kids to their exes. They are waiting at the un unaccompanied minors counter to get information about a late flight or a gate change. I walk over to the counter, look at the flight information, pretend to be worried. My sister, I say, I'm waiting for my little sister. She's never been to Paris before, I'm going to take her to the Louvre. She wants to work in fashion someday, she's already, she's already very talented. I hope everything is okay, that she had a good flight. She means the world to me. She's my half-sister, but I love her like a sister. A smile. He takes another sniff, glances around the cap, and picks up where he left off. The half-sister line, it works every time. Divorced parents, remarried. Every time. He bursts out laughing. Let him talk. A word of advice, though, you have to get there early. Make a day of it. Keep an eye on the domestic flight, the delays, the companies. It requires a little preparation, but I usually go home with 20, even 30 numbers. Whoa, what the hell? What are you trying to do with those? I mean, how can you work that list off? 30 numbers? As if you call every one of them. In six hours. Not bad, huh? Uh, let him talk. Another thing, I wouldn't recommend orally. The counters are a disaster there. If you have to go back and forth between the different levels, it's exhausting. And the neon lights, they ruin your eyes. No, Roissy is definitely the way to go. Domestic flights terminal. He rubs his hands together. <laughs> what the hell? I can feel it. Today's my lucky day. It's going to be amazing. <sighs> what the hell? <laughs> They're going to fall for me big time. You can't resist, you give a slight cough and say... Excuse me, do you mind if I ask you a personal question? No, of course, not at all. Anything to help you understand my game plan. It's kind of strange that he's just really ready to tell you everything to a stranger, but I guess this is also said to be our special ability, that people are comfortable around us and tell us a lot of things. So... <laughs> do you realize you're a total asshole? <laughs> Okay, well, I guess I won't get anywhere without, with, when I'm being so blunt, but... <sighs> hmm, do you really need to go through all that, or what do you do after all that? I, I'm gonna ask what do you do after all that. After what? After you get their numbers. Ah, very good question. Yeah, I wondered that too. I rate all the women I talk to. Give them stars on a scale of 1 to 5 according to appeal level. Oh my god, really? Are you taking their photos too? I mean, how are you able to remember 30 women just by their phone numbers? Oh, oh wow. I go home and I start sending messages. First to the three stars. He drops his voice in knowing tones. They're the easiest. The best looks, easy ratio. Same thing the next day with the four stars. They usually play hard to get. They see themselves as real beauties. He sniffs with a look of disgust. And then the five stars the day after that. Just to leave them hanging a little to get them to doubt their own attractiveness. Oh, wow. Uh, such a player. <laughs> it's rule number one when you want to pick up women with little strategy. Lower their sense of self-esteem. The cab pulls into the drop-off lane. Your passenger pays the fare and exits the cab. Well, that didn't give us much information. About our murderer. I'm telling you, you should take my advice. It's a piece of cake. Sure thing. Just need to come up with a good line or two. They all fall for it. 
It's really bizarre, that smell of shit. It seems to be following me wherever I go. <laughs> Maybe you stepped on something. He walks away. Under the sole of his right shoe, you catch sight of a dark brown spot. <laughs> oh, okay, I knew it. <laughs> I called it. The passenger disappears into the airport. Well, I guess this will definitely smaller the chances with the ladies today. You roll down the backseat window and start up the cab. <laughs> yeah, I think you need to let in some fresh air after that. Okay, so we got some money. We even got a tip. How nice. Yeah, we definitely gotta take that. So, who's next? Hmm. I mean, she's closest, so... That would be an idea. Let's do that. I don't know why it's shaky. <laughs> Patricia Hossein, I'm going to town. Okay, I guess that's almost the whole way that we just went there and back, but okay, let's do that. Beautiful woman climbs into your car. There's something sensual and comforting about her. Oh, she looks nice. Oh, no, I just missed it. But don't worry, I'm taking a cab. Anyhow, I just wanted you to know... For a minute you think she's talking to herself, but she leans over and whispers her address to you. I think you really enjoyed it today. As you start the cab, you notice a hands-free headset practically hidden by her thick head of hair. I'll massage his feet tomorrow and I'll let you do the rest. What the hell? A small laugh escapes her. <laughs> or the other way around, sure. And, uh, Cruz, it's normal to feel a little awkward at first, or uncomfortable. I mean, not knowing what to do. But you'll see. A couple more days and you'll get the hang of it. Anyhow, you should get to bed now. You need to keep up your strength. She stopped talking. Her phone call is over. She catches your eye in the rear of your mirror and bursts out laughing. You look shocked. A little. I don't know. Your passenger crosses her legs and gives you a playful pout. You're just like any other guy. Imagining all kinds of dirty things, of course. Like I'm on my way home from a threesome. Something really hot. A mischievous gleam lights up her eyes and suddenly vanishes. Sorry to disappoint you, but the truth is a bit more de depressing. Actually, I was at my son's house. <laughs> okay, I think this is not going in this direction, so I'm gonna say nothing. I've been taking care of him since his accident. I'm a nurse. Oh, okay, that makes sense. His accident? <sighs> That's a little bit too blunt, so I'm gonna say it. sorry. Don't be. You had nothing to do with it. She pauses dramatically. At least I don't think you did. You don't happen to drive a semi in your spare time, do you? A smile of dry amusement flickers across your passenger's face. Anyway, he's been in a coma for weeks now. Great too. Not a total vegetable, but not all that hearty either. So I had to move him to this place. Cruz and I are taking care of him now. Cruz? His fiance. Aww. A lovely girl. Your passenger puts her hand to her mouth to smother a giggle. Totally inhibited, but sweet. Very religious. She prays in Spanish at his bedside every night. They've been going out for two years now, and I still don't think they've... She blushes. Well, you know. A brief silence. You find yourself trying to think of something to say. Hmm. <laughs> How are you holding up, I guess? Your passenger doesn't answer right away. You're afraid you've embarrassed her, but her face looks relaxed. I work in palliative care, you know. I've spent the last eight years of my life talking, taking care of people who are going to die. The only question worth asking is how long before they die. It helps keep the things in perspective. In my son's case, there's still hope, and at least I can help. I mean, I know how to do it anyhow. 
For one thing, there's the day-to-day -day stuff. Nails, hair, beard. It all grows like crazy. There's a lot of maintenance, like a gardener. Same for the teeth. We have to brush them every now and then. Because, believe me, if Tit1 wakes up looking and smelling like a werewolf, we'll never hear the end of it. Smile escapes you. Your passenger sees it in the rearview mirror and is clearly pleased. Aww. But the biggest risk is not being able to move. Our bodies are meant to move. I know it's hard to believe when our alarm clocks go off, but it's true. Our blood circulation stops working correctly, our skin gets cold, loses all its elasticity. So we have to massage them as often as we can. And then there are the bed sores. Do you know what bed sores are? I think it comes from when you're laying too long on one position or something. Um, I think so. In the hospital, there are a lot of patients who are still conscious and who have bed sores. Their bodies are wrecked with pain. It's like being skinned alive. The worst part is we have to change the bandages twice a day. Talk about brave. Working in the hospital is hard. The work, it's pretty depressing, but... But in Tituan's case, it's different. I don't have a choice. It has to be done. And actually, I'm happy. We can't talk to each other anymore. He doesn't even react when I touch him. So taking care of him is just my way of showing him I love him. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yes, it is. Definitely is. Pretty odd, huh? But that's how it goes. Your passenger shudders briefly. Okay, Patricia. Enough of that depressing stuff. Let me tell you something funny. Earlier tonight, when Cruz and I were watching Tituan... Not exactly a pleasure cruise. My son is well over six feet tall and Cruz is a cross between a mesh stick and a Q-tip. <laughs> so I was managing as best as I could, rolling him into one side and then the other. She was trying to help, though the truth it is it's pretty hard for her to take. I mean, it's all new to her. I, it can't be, much, can't be that much fun. So she was muttering religious mumbo-jumbo to herself in Spanish, Dios mio and whatnot. And just as I was rolling Tituan back onto his back, guess what? He got an enormous erection. <laughs> okay. Um, shall we laugh? Shall we say sorry? Shall we say nothing? Okay. I'm really uncomfortable with this conversation. I mean, come on. But I guess it's true. Everyone wants to tell us everything. But... Um, uh, she's gonna say nothing? She seems a little puzzled by your silence. You seem a little shocked. Well, it gave me a good laugh at any rate. I mean, I wasn't going to start crying or anything. Yeah, but it's still strange. I mean, that's your son you're talking about. <laughs> you pull up to the address she had given you. <laughs> okay. You stop the cab and she hands you the fare. Thanks for the conversation. The ride went by really fast. She reaches for the door and stops. You can sense she's really on edge. It's good to be able to talk. Pretty unusual in Paris to meet someone so warm. Good luck. She shrugs automatically as if she didn't understand what she meant. Same to you. She shuts the door carefully and walks away. Your eye follows her as she climbs the steps to the door of her building. A moment later she's gone. You feel something surfacing. Dark thoughts, pictures, memories. The bed sores she talked about. <laughs> you notice a newspaper on the back seat. Your last passenger must have left it behind. Or the one before. You grab it and put it away. Could come in handy. You turn the key in the ignition and drive away. Well, she didn't give a lot of tip, but okay. I'll take it. The door suddenly opens and a woman gets into the back seat. Having a good night? For a second you freeze. It's one of the cops working on a judge's case. She grins at you. Her voice creaks. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks I've been saying to myself, there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, mulled it over, bugged all my fellow cops about it because I was sure you lied to us. 
I didn't lie. She whistles to cut you off. Hey, I'm talking. She has a cold sneer on her face. I'm going to be frank with you. She leans over to you. I don't think you're the judge. Nah, I just can't picture it. She squints like she's trying to make you out from the far away. Like you'd have gone to the extent of hurting yourself. Yeah, between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, he talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I'd think he had a crush on you. She smirks. No, no, I think he's more interested in your profile. In prison at 17? An icy chill fills your gut. Oh no, that's not good. And for murder too? You open your mouth, but nothing comes out. Since you got out, you've kept a low profile, but you're lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's normal, you'd say. If they get word of your time served, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car. Meaning no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost warm. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. Oh, well, of course. She leans forward, her shining cat-like eyes narrowing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name with evidence. Actually, knowing him, he's not so hard on evidence. So, I'll give you info. Victims, suspects, medical reports, some photos that are a bit... She makes a gagging noise. <laughs> you have to be discreet. Keep it between you and me. Interrogate, ask questions, dig around. She shrugs. Don't worry, you're already keener than half the squad. And don't forget, I'm not asking you to make an arrest and deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in front of the station, okay? You're not Batman, you're just here to get more information. She rummages around in her pockets for what seemed like forever. Here, take my card. I'll call you in three, four days just to check in, we'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She takes on a didactic, paternalistic tone, like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught, don't get arrested, also I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like and I know who your friends are. You can either be the solution or the problem, my friend. She takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to, I'll go check in on you know who. Her smile is biting. That reminds me, she knows you've done time. You shake your head. She snickers. Ooh, who's she? Oh, my little dirtbag. You cover your tracks well. I did what I could. <laughs> Yeah, if you say so. She sighs in a tired, exaggerated way. Don't try to mess with me, man. If things don't go well, I'll turn you in. I'll send your picture to all my friends and the media and every asshole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it, your real name. Anyone close to you will have their place to search, they'll be put under house arrest, spent nights in jail. You have any idea how tense things are with that fucker's trial underway? You know, just what she's trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last names are almost the same. You could be brothers, actually. Oh no, 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 not again such a brother scenario. <laughs> Don't give me that crap again. I'm giving We the Revolution flashbacks. Um... I'm nothing like that son of a bitch. Please don't make me his brother again. That would be a little bit old. She smiles. Let me tell you, if that face of yours and your handle, they'll welcome you with open arms. You have no right. Oh, I'm just gonna say nothing, I guess it's no use anyway. She takes on a serious tone, business-like. I want to catch this killer personally. I want to drag him to court, run his fucking ruin his fucking life with a bang. I can't botch this case, you got me? Neither can you, right? Obviously. Well, great then. See eye to eye. So you can just say you're my informant. My CI. He ripped open your gut, you saw your own insides, you were in a coma. Yeah, you have plenty of reasons to want to get back at him. She furrows her brow. 
Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I'll tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to all the rumors, and you come up with a list of suspects. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. All right, then don't get fired. Without this cap, you're worth nothing to me. You glare at her. <laughs> Fucking bitch. No, I guess not. I guess I have to put up with her. She puts her hand up and you can hear the words behind it. This conversation never happened. I'll make sure you get more intel tomorrow. I'll find a way. Until then... Not a word to anyone, obviously. Not a word. The door opens, squeaks and slams shut. Fucking bitch. You sit alone for a while, teeth clenched, dry eyed, ears buzzing. Shit. On the back seat, the cop left a pile of papers. Shit. Key in the ignition, motor running. Radio on, crackles, you turn it off and start driving. Talking to passengers might unlock new documents and clues for your investigation. You will find them back at your studio after your shift. Okay, so we got six clues discovered available in our room. Well then, let's see what's this about. So are we going home now or what? You take a second to enjoy the silence of your studio apartment. Outside, the city is slowly waking up. You can still hear the hum of the taxi buzzing in your ears. You throw the files Pese gave you on the table. On the wall, you hung up the big cork board where you used to pin up photos of your nephews. They've been gone since you got out of... Your plan is simple. Jot down all the pieces of evidence and connect them to the suspects. The guilty part won't necessarily be the one with the most evidence against them, but the ones with the most compelling evidence against them. It's like you're building a story about each suspect, trying to understand their motives, understand how he or she got into the situation. Oh, okay. You're suddenly overcome with the desire to sleep. You close your eyes, press your fingers to your eyelids and let out a yawn. You crack your knuckles and get to work. Okay, so now we can look at autopsy reports and all that. And so we have to make connections. Okay. So, this is def this will definitely be a lot to look at later. So, we are going to do that in the next episode. And I hope you enjoyed it so far. Uh, it definitely piqued my interest, so I'm interested to see how it continues, and I hope you are too. I hope you will continue to join me on the journey as a taxi driver. And please, God, don't let it be another uh, crazy brother tale again. That would really be horrible. I've already been through that in We the Revolution. That would be so strange. We are going to look at all those documents and do our connections the next time. And thank you so much for watching. See you then.